So welcome back. Um, in the last video, we determined what historical phonology is about. And once again, to recapitulate, for historical phonology is about the change of speech sounds over long periods of time, the investigation of that. Okay. Um, and I would like to uh, give an example, okay, of a development, sound developments, yeah, what you could do in historical phonology over a very long period of time. Okay, so this is going to concern us now. Um, here we go. Yeah, uh, there is the example of a word which uh, probably has its origin something like uh, 6,000 years ago in Indo-European, um, meaning white or bright, something like this. Okay, a word which has to do with light. Okay. And um, so, uh, and we reconstruct, you can reconstruct um, the etymon, if you like, yeah, the um, urwort. Um, if you go back to Indo European some 6,000 years ago, approximately, there must have been a word, and this asterisk means, yeah, reconstructed something like leokot, yeah, leokosh, something like this, leo, leo, yeah, leokot, uh, 6,000 years ago. And um, this developed over time, yeah, this is Indo European, and developed uh, over time into Germanic. And some 3,000 years later, we have something like leocht, yeah. Leocht. This word became Leocht, yeah, from Leoc to Leocht. Uh, Leocot, Leocht. Uh -huh. And since English is a Germanic language, okay, um, it uh, then came into English, yeah, through Germanic, through West Germanic, into English. And this is the first time this word um, was written down in Old English times, yeah, starting something like 1500 years ago, there's a word called Leocht. Yeah? Okay, so this Leocht developed into Leocht, and this is Old English. Okay, then um, approximately another thousand years, or something like this, 900, 800, yeah? this Leocht became Licht or Licht. We're not quite sure whether Licht or Licht, yeah, yeah? this fricative here. Um, then, a hundred years later, this fricative was lost, okay, and uh, uh, the vowel sound was lengthened instead and became lead, okay, lead. And then later on, this lead, a hundred years later, was diphthongized into late, okay, and then there you have a dissimulation, probably something like, I don't know, 200, 300 years ago, it became light, yeah, so this is the way from Leocot, okay, 6,000 years ago to present day light. Uh, you don't have to give me that. It's, it's just an example, okay, uh, to show you what uh, historical phonology can do, okay? And we will do some of these things later on. This is just by way of uh, exemplifying what we are going to do. Um, and uh, so what do we gain from that? Well, that's the question. What do we gain from knowing about the history of light? Okay. Um, first of all, uh, correspondences in other languages, under Indo-European languages, which have a word also deriving from the Indo-European stem, leok, leokot, yeah, something like this. Um, Greek, very close still, yeah, something like, I don't know, two and a half thousand years ago. Le Leokos, yeah, today present day Lefkos, some of this, Leokos, yeah, Leokos. But you have Latin, Lux, okay, or Lucere in Latin, okay, Croatian, I was just uh, told, Luch, yeah, or in Spanish, Luth, and so on. Um, so you see uh, that there are certain correspondences, and you may draw parallels to other languages if you know about these things. Okay, uh, Germanic. Let's go back to that. Uh, 3,000 years ago, Leuch, you remember, this is the stem, which gives you English light. Yeah? Swedish, Lius. I don't know exactly what it, how it's pronounced. German, Licht, yeah? Leuchten, okay? uh, Danish, Lis, and so on. Okay? And you see the correspondences here, all deriving from the same Indo-European root, if you like. Okay. So, what else do we gain from knowing about the history of light, uh, of, of the word light? Um, what you see, and that's uh, uh, very endearing, is we spell Middle English today and pronounce Modern English. 
Okay, well, that's the main reason why English spelling is so awkward. Uh, look at that. Um, if you see the present day, day sp spelling of light, yeah, you see the GH there. Nobody ever questioned that. But why is it there? Yeah, because the GH thingy um, denominated ones, okay, a fricative. Okay, the ich or ach, uh, uh, which doesn't exist in English anymore. Therefore, you have these problems yeah? pronouncing German, for example. So, a uh, Licht. Okay, but we say light today, but you still write Licht. Um, this is one of the major problems uh, we are facing um, as far as the English language is concerned. Okay, uh, we write. Middle English, so spelling of something like, yeah, the sounds of something like, um, I don't know, six, seven hundred years ago, and pronounce it in a completely different fashion. If you know that and tell your students, no, there's a lot, okay? Why is English spelling so awkward? Yes, it's a historical spelling, and this is what it is. It preserves Middle English, not modern. Okay, uh, various other examples. Okay, so you have Middle English and, and, and then you have the correspondences here. Yeah, Knicht, Night. Oh, come on, what happened here? Yeah, Inuch, today enough. Okay, we still spell Inuch. Okay, Drucht, uh, today drought. Thuch, uh, today though. Oh, wow, that's a long way to go. Uh, much, today much. Okay, Fierst, today first, okay, or word, today um, word, oh, there's an L here, should be an R, doesn't matter, yeah, word, okay, word or word, or something like food and fur, all right, okay, yeah, uh, these are developments, and if you look at that, yeah, very regular, if you regard the Middle English thing, okay, and the spelling, correspondence is here, Makes perfect sense, but modern English just, I mean, went a completely different way. Okay, uh, um, already alluded to that here, yeah, though and enough. Yes, they were perfect rhymes in Middle English because they were thuch and inuch. And thuch and inuch, well, that's the definition of a perfect rhyme. You know? First vowel after the stress and everything that follows. Yes, okay, thuch. So what we have here, and this is something you have to learn, it's a typical phoneme split, yeah? which means the Middle English phoneme ch split into f and zero. Yeah, this the symbol. Yeah, zero. Yeah? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, 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 the phoneme ch yeah? into f and zero. A phoneme split. Uh, so, if you pronounce every grapheme in English uh, and give the vowels their Latin value, the vowels, I'm talking about the vowels now, you're very close to Middle English, okay? Because Middle English encodes the Latin value of vowels. Um, if you don't know Latin, any other Germanic or Romance language will do. Uh, okay, German, or Spanish, or French, or Italian, something like that. Okay, uh, uh, here is uh, Geoffrey Chaucer, yeah, just uh, a general prologue, um, a few lines, um, which I would like to read out to you and then uh, try to just give you an example, I mean, of what you should do if you want to read it in Middle English. So, but nevertheless, yeah. will he have team and sparser? Already further in this tale pass, and methinketh it a core downs to resume to tell you all the condition of age of him. So as it said it may, and which they were, and of what degree, an egg in what array that they were in, and at the knicht, then will he first begin. Yeah. Okay, something like this, but just this one line. Yeah. While I have time and space, will he have team and sparse? And there you see. Yeah. Will. Okay. E. No diphthong. Yeah. Have. A in Latin is a. Okay, team, just E is long E, as in Latin, okay, and sparse, same thing, yeah, will E have team and sparse today, while I have time and space, okay, very different, okay, um, a digression, yeah? a digression, you may say, uh, that German and French spelling, for example, yeah, to, to other languages, and it, uh, is not very regular as well. At least it's not phonetic, okay? Because you have graphemes in French, 
and graphemes in German, and the corresponding sounds are not very Latin. And that is true. Okay, uh, think of the German EU spelling, which in German is today Oi. Oh, yeah. Feuer, teuer, neu, Freund, and so on. It's not EU. It should be Feuer, Teuer, Neue, Freund. It's something like this. It was once. Same thing. Yeah. Or in French, uh, E A O, yeah. uh, or E A E A U, which is today a monothong O. Okay. Uh, so it was like all bore bureau or something like this. Yes, no correspondence to the Latin vowels here, but the difference to English is it's very regular. Okay, it is very regular, and that's the main difference. Yeah, if you know uh, that German EU is always oi, cannot be mistaken. Okay, if you know that in French EAU is always o, makes perfect sense. In English, it doesn't. One example here, if you have an IE spelling in English, look at that. It can be I, as in lie. It can be long E, as in field. Or it can even be short A, as in friend. Huh. Huh? Okay, <laughs> there's no direct correspondence here. Okay, uh, 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 let me stop. Um, and uh, what I just wanted to, to, to show you is... Um, um, if if, you, if your students ever ask you, I mean, why is English spelling so awful? Okay, the first thing you tell them is because it's historical. We write Middle English, okay, and pronounce Modern English. We write Knicht and say Night. We write Knorwe and say No. I Knorwe. Well, this is what we write. I Knorwe. This is Chaucer. I know, well, this is how we pronounce it today. <sighs> Loads of these things. So, there was a lot going on in English after Middle English times. And the language changed a lot since then. But spelling didn't keep track. That's it. Okay, Just stayed very conservative and so we will start uh, in the next video i will start with telling you what happened uh, in between between middle english and modern english which in a way caused that split between spelling on the one hand and sound on the other so yeah stay with me